Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. We are continuing our dental anatomy sessions. Uh, today we have mandibular second molar. Last session we finished mandibular first molar. Mandibular first molar uh, is a tooth with uh, many features in each aspect. Uh, let it be buccal, lingual, mesial, distal and occlusal aspect has so many features. Uh, many fossas, uh, pits and many uh, grooves. Uh, coming to mandibular second molar. Uh, many features are not very prominent so mostly the maxillary first molar and mandibular second uh, i mean mandibular first molars will be having most of the features so uh, we'll start with our numbering system uh, we have three numbering system as you all know universal uh, zygmonti palmer system and uh, fta system So universal system since it is lower teeth we have one here 8 9 16 17 and this will be 32 okay so we have two second molars that is left second molar it will be 18 and right lower second molar 31 so when you're studying universal system always you need to have 1 8 9 16 17 24 25 and 32 in your mind after that you connect the particular tooth okay so if uh, 31 means it's the second molar so you need to have uh, 32 in your mind that is a uh, third molar right third molar so the ne next tooth 31 will be the right lower second molar you can't by heart all these only thing uh, you can uh, make sure that you know 1 8 9 16 17 24 25 and 32 are the end tooth in each quadrant uh, the Zygmunt Palmer system it will be 7 and 7 and FT system will be 3 7 and 4 7 okay so that is about uh, our systems of numbering next we have uh, the dimensions and chronology in chronology we have uh, first evidence of calcification between two to three and a half years enamel completed uh, between seven to eight years eruption by 11 to 13 years and root completion by 14 to 15 years now we have dimensions so dimension while well, coming to the dimension second molar overall length is 18.8 mm that is overall then uh, the crown length is very shorter 5.5 mm length of root is 11.3 mm then uh, mesiodistal diameter is 9.9 .9 mm and the same at cervix is 7.2 mm and labiolingual dimension is 8.7 and 6.4 okay now let's move on to the various aspects so we'll start with each aspect before that the principal identifying features of mandibular second molar it is more like a rounded uh, square occlusal outline okay with four cusps two buccal two lingual there is no distal cusp it is not as wide uh, mesiodistally as to the mandibular first molar because it's a square shaped and buccal aspect has just one groove whereas in first molar it has two grooves and there is lots of supplemental groove on the occlusal surface and the two roots which are less broader and they are more close together compared to the mandibular first molar so these features will make you to uh, 
easily identifying the mandible of first and second molar in your exam that is a practical exam so we'll start with our buccal side or buccal aspect so the picture you can easily make out the crown is shorter and narrower mesiodistally than the first molar then uh, there is one developmental groove which divides the mesiobuccal and distobuccal cusp which are almost equal in size okay you can see the size in first molar we have a larger mesiolingual then the uh, mesiobuccal then finally the distal but this is mesiobuccal and distobuccal are almost same and there are two roots uh, mesial and distal and are less broader and they are more close together uh, next uh, we have our lingual aspect only the lingual cusp is in view because the tips of the lingual cusps are higher than the buccal cusp okay and uh, the mesial aspect welcoming to mesial aspect the cervical ridge uh, buccal is less pronounced and the occlusal surface is constricted buccolingually and the cervical line shows no curvature it is almost flat and the two roots may be seen from this side whereas the distal aspect the absence of distal cusp and distal buccal groove compared to the mandibular first molar and most of the occlusal surfaces can be seen from distal aspect just like any other tooth and now we have the occlusal aspect occlusal aspect it is roughly a rectangular the central groove is in the center with the lingual and buccal developmental grooves meeting with the central groove at right angle like this this is 90 degree and there are four cusps uh, two buccal that is mesiobuccal and distobuccal and two lingual that is mesiolingual and distolingual and many supplemental grooves radiating from the developmental grooves so that was all about mandibular second molar as i said uh, less features compared to the mandibular first molar uh, mostly the first molars will be uh, asked for your university papers sometimes they will ask second molar sometimes it will be a comparison of mandibular first and second molar so whenever you are studying mandibular first molar just go to the mandibular second molar and compare and study it will be very much easier than mandibular third molar is not very important on a uh, exam point of view okay so i'll come up with another topic in dentistry and more thank you